when we start talking about our half court offense, um, the past couple of years, we've run Nova. Nova is basically for us, dribble drive offense, um, trying to create as much space as we possibly can for our teammates to attack the paint and then make the right decision when we get in there. Um, we talk a lot about giving space to teammates. We talk a lot about this idea of not driving into single gaps, but driving with double and triple gaps. And then when we do attack the rim, we always want to attack the rim with a pivot. As long as we have a pivot foot, we are in great shape on offense. Um, get an advantage, use an advantage, and keep the advantage there. So this is kind of our, our offense for the past couple of years that we've kind of taken a look at um, with that. So some of the terminology in over here we have on the left of like holding your spot, hitting the one more, what is a slice cut, what is a circle cut. Um, we have some new terms that we kind of want to talk a little bit about that we're going to work on this summer and for the off season of some different things that we want to kind of work on in our Nova set. But basically Nova is spreading out, giving guys space and then looking to dribble drive attack um, with that. So let's take a look at some of the actions here um, in our Nova set. So here's our first one. We create a slice cut. Calvin slices cuts through. Mark now, the guy with the ball, now has tremendous space to attack. And he goes right to the rim on this particular end of it. Um, here's Cody Sauce here now. We have our man in the corner who's supposed to hold his spot. We have great spacing on this side of the floor, and he just attacks and gets himself to the paint. Slice cut here again. We're now attacking here, and now we get two points off of that. So that's the primary look in our Nova set. Okay, now we got some different things here. Now we got Scott Kelly here. He's now driving the triple gap. We call this a quick pitch when the guy helps off of that spacing. And it's a three-pointer for us all day. You'll see this again here. He's sending him through, slice cut. We now have a dribble. He helps. Quick pitch for a three-pointer. Now, we don't have the quick pitch. He does a pretty good job defending it. Now, Curtis is going to attack. He then passes. Now, we, we're going again now. Triple gap again here. Calvin is attacking. The guy helps, and it's quick pitch, three-pointer every single time off of that. So that was a good job of getting multiple triple gaps in a possession. Scott Kelly slice cuts through, creates space for Curtis. Curtis now quick pitches here, and now Will's attacking and getting himself into the paint and getting themselves a paint touch. Now the other option is we can go back door when the guy gets caught looking at the ball. So now Alex is attacking the triple gap has plenty of space. Will does a great backdoor cut off of it, and we get an and one um, on that action. Backdoor cut here, same type of action, looking at it. Triple gap, pass. Now Scott Kelly is attacking and getting himself into the paint there. Our spacing isn't great with Curtis of cutting into the paint, bringing a defender. And as you can see here, it forces Scott to take a pull-up jumper, so we, we got to work on that. But that's the idea of what we call a kick up when we don't have the backdoor cut. Here's another example, triple gap. Boom, Will's gonna kick up. And now Will is attacking the paint and getting himself in there. And as you can see here, he gets a great look at the basket. Great slice cut by Will, unselfish. We pass, Calvin's now getting himself into the paint. The guy over helps. Scott does a great job uh, staying out wide, and now he's got a self a three-pointer. Drive here. This is our last one. We'll talk about this a little bit later on. But this is the dump-off pass. So our five-man is an opposite block. Dump-off pass here for the easy two points off of that. So that is typically the actions and the shots we end up getting in our notes.
this upcoming summer in 2020-2021 uh, season, we're looking to run some more five-out motion. Um, the philosophy and the goals of our offense are going to remain the same, hunting for those money shots, um, giving space to teammates, and so on. But we're looking to go five out a little bit more. Number one, we're looking to incorporate um, the five-man in our offense a bit more. We noticed that last year our five-man running going opposite block maybe got two or three layups throughout the entire season in our Nova actions. And we need our five man to be more involved in that. Number two, we're trying to remove uh, number five's defender from the paint as well. We're hoping that that will allow for more attacking of the rim and not have to worry about the help side coming over. Number three, the motion is going to allow us to continue with our dribble drive actions, but it's also going to allow us to score in multiple ways. We're going to be able to score basket cuts. We're going to be able to score screening away. We're going to be able to score in two-man games. And we like that added feature to our particular offense on this upcoming season. Um, so our five-out motion, just some of the, the guidelines here. Number one, we wanted to keep the rules few and simple. Um, we wanted to allow for more random movement and actions, which I'll explain in a second. Um, and then we want to continue with what we've always talked about of getting paint touches, um, whether we're driving to the paint or in this, this particular offense, maybe it might be hitting it with a pass. Um, so you can see the five spots here, your traditional five out spacing. We also have these short corner spots, the six and seven spots, what we call kind of hiding spots. So that means when you cut in, if there's no corner to go to, you're going to go to this little hiding spot and just kind of wait and see what happens with the other actions. And then you can pop out to the corner or move from there. So these are our five expectations um, for our players in this particular offense. This is what we're gonna focus on. And we're going to go over each one of these individually. We wanna be able to drive on closeouts or off of bulls and slice cuts, which we'll explain in a second. Um, we have some principles of when the drive is coming to you, um, we have some principles of what you do when you make a, a pass um, to a teammate, if you make an inside pass, and then finally this idea of playmaker status, which I'll explain later, talking about this idea of trying to make plays individually um, in the offense. So this is our motion language um, of how we're going to call out things. So if you make a basket cut, we're going to call that a bulls cut. If you make a curl cut off of a screen, we're going to call it a Celtic cut. As you notice, it's the first letter um, kind of corresponds to what cut you are making. Um, so this will allow us to kind of disguise it a little bit more um, to the opposing team, but still give us a common language so we all know that we're on the same page. So a lot of these cuts, um, our guys already know, it's just going to be kind of changing the language um, and just kind of hitting that home. A little bit more. The playmaker status, which will go to certain players who have shown that they can handle it, um, there's some actions that we want you to kind of run, two-man game actions, to try to get an advantage and keep that advantage. We'll be looking at that um, a little bit later. So this is expectation number one. We want to drive it on closeouts. So for example here, the four man is going to make what we call a curl or Celtic cut. He cuts to the rim. Um, the five man will replace himself or make a rocket cut back out here. Now, in particular, this can turn into a closeout. Five's defender is closing out here. When he catches this ball, we want him to drive it. We want him to drive it to the green. The green represents a double or a triple gap. We don't want him driving back here because, as you can see, this would be a single gap. There's just not a lot of room to be able to make a play. We want to make plays when we have spacing. We believe that that truly cuts down turnovers. Um, second one here, the one man passes to the two. He makes a bulls cut, which is just a straight basket cut through the paint. And now the two man now has a, a double, double gap here. We don't want him going this way. That's going to lead to turnovers. We want him to attack and see if he can get himself into the paint going into the middle. 
Um, reading the drive is really simple and really consistent with what we've done in Nova. So this will be a very easy one for guys to pick up. Um, so four man's looking to drive here to the double triple gap, not the single gap. And as he drives, the five man's got to hold his spot and just wait. He could do a blazer cut, which is a backdoor cut when four picks up his dribble. Or when four picks up his dribble, five men can use a what we call a kick up or a knit cut to replace. And then he's going to look to attack from there. But the priority here is number four, you got to drive and attack the rim and get to the paint with a pivot. Um, expectation number three is your screen away options. So one thing you can do is if you pass, you can make a bull cut or a basket cut. Um, the second thing you can do if you pass is you can screen away, okay? And this is another way for our offense to score besides just dribble attacking, which is what I really like about this offense. So here, two man passes to the one, he cuts through, he could do a bull cut here, but he ends up squaring off his cut and he sets a screen for the three man. The three man will eat up space, which will be a terminology that we'll talk about this year. Um, and he's going to curl or Celtics cut into the rim. On that curl cut, our two man needs to make a cut as well. He needs to what we call a rocket cut back out. And he's looking to catch here and then making a play off of that on that side. We have our back door cut. If the guy, if three's defender overplays it and tries to not let a face cut happen, same thing, rocket cut. We have what we call a straight cut or just a sonic cut, which is just your typical down screen. Two man basket cuts or bulls cuts. Then he cuts off, squares it off, sets a good screen, and then three man just pops and looking for the three pointer. As you notice, the four man has a responsibility. If the three goes outside, the two man, excuse me, has to slip it or spurs cut into the paint. So we're always doing the opposite of your particular player. This one will prove to be really important for us this year and our ability to shoot to three um, is when defenders go underneath. So when defenders go underneath the screen here by the two man, we're gonna call what we call a pop cut or a pelican cut, okay? The last, um, as you can see again, the first initial of the name represents the cut. And this one we're looking to kick out for the three pointer with the two man seeing that and setting a rescreen option on that. Expectation number four is a Laker cut. Um, what happens here is let's say the four man executes a curl cut or a Celtics cut, we hit him. Um, typically the one man's defender will look. He will look to see where the ball goes. And that's when we want the one man to Laker cut into the paint. Um, two items here, A, we might be looking for a little bounce pass for a layup, a little give and go action. Or number two, which is probably the more likely thing that can happen is Ford's going to take a shot on this Celtics cut, and this is when we want the one man getting in for some offensive rebounding opportunities and giving us another chance. Finally is playmaker status. Now, playmaker status, let me explain this first. Um, you have to qualify, you have to show the coaching staff that you can handle playmaker status. Our offense is based on giving guys space. When guys have space, we are better players and we turn the ball over less. Our turnovers come from when space um, shrinks and we start going into two or three guys. So the idea of playmaker status is you're gonna make a play here, but the challenging part is you gotta be able to read it and take care of the ball and make the right play. Because what we're doing in playmaker status is that we're bringing two defenders now to the ball. So if you struggle with great spacing and not making the right decision. We definitely do not want to bring two defenders um, within four or five feet of you because that will make your job more difficult. Um, but if you have playmaker status, that means you can run this stuff at any time. This is that randomness that we want in our offense. Um, so you never know when a ball screen's coming. And you make a play with another playmaker um, on that. So we're looking to have three players or so that have that kind of playmaker status, two or three players that can kind of create some random actions in our offense. So for example, let's say it's our five men. 
five man has the ball, he passes to the one. Now, typically, he would uh, screen away or, or bulls cut through. This one, he's going to run what we're going to call our Philly action, pick and roll, okay? Um, think about LB, you know, Joel, you know, rolling to the basket, going hard there. So he's going to cut. He's going to then screen. Now we're just running a simple pick and roll action from there or a Philly action. One's looking to attack. I like this. He's got a triple gap, double gap action, plenty of space. And now we got our five man rolling down to the basket. And now we have some randomness in our offense. Second action here, uh, what we're going to call our, our Phoenix action or what we know as the guys know it as our pistol action, which is kind of where pistol came from with Steve Nash. Um, and D'Antoni as coach. So on this one now, the five man, so let's say the four runs his Celtics cut, the five man now, instead of running his like rocket cut back out, he just sees it's a great opportunity to kind of come to the ball. Three passes to five, three's a playmaker as well. And now we're running our little pistol action or our Phoenix action. Five can hand the ball off, five can keep it if he wants to, but now it's kind of pick and roll action with a kind of little quick pass and you go back and get it. Um, finally, in, in terms of playmaker status actions that you can run is you can also run a Golden State action. Um, the Golden State refers to ghost or setting a ghost screen. This is really important when we face teams that switch. Um, you know, in particular, I'm thinking about like Marshwood. They switch everything on their defense. So again, the four man actually executes a blazer cut here. He goes back door, and now here comes the five man, which you would think would be a screen, but he's not going to screen. He's just going to kind of cut and then code to the basket. Um, this will create that miscommunication between five's defender um, and the one defender. And you'll see here in film here, this will allow the one man to kind of get himself into the paint with a true triple gap. Um, with three holding his spot in the corner. So here's some going to be some videos of the kind of the motion principles with the cuts that we're going to be looking at um, for this upcoming uh, season here. So this first one here, you want to be looking at 23, and what we're going to be looking at is some of uh, our bulls cut, or just straight basket cuts, getting ourselves to the paint here. So here, fakes little screen pass. Basket cut in there. There's another bowl from number 10. You know, really simple, um, but, you know, just good action, good hard cuts to the paint. Second one now is what we call our Celtics cut. So you're going to see here, this guy is going to curl around this particular screen and reading it from here. There is a curl from there. And now this guy, number 31, needs to execute a rocket cut. Since he cut through, he's going to pop out or rocket cut back out which he does, and now he squares up from there. They actually run a little action there, which we'll talk about later. Here comes 14 again. 14 is going to curl it. Now, 40 could rocket cut it out, which he should, but he also has the opportunity to be a playmaker. So he's actually going to run the Phoenix action that we're going to take a look at in a playmaker status role. So 40 comes, pass, little give and go, screen, and now they're playing a two-man game off of that. Same thing here now. Now we're going to see a blazer cut, which is a backdoor. Guy's overplaying. And again, we're going to see the Phoenix action again here on this particular look. Here we go again. You're going to see the blazer cut again. Backdoor. And now this one here, we run that again. We run our Phoenix action. Kind of that pistol pass and then go get the ball and then make a play off of that. Here's just a straight sonic cut or a straight cut. 14 here, just going to get caught up through the screens. He takes a three-pointer, you know, really simple from there. Um, now, here's our pelican cut. This, remember, is when the defender goes underneath. You're looking to pop it out and looking to shoot the three here. So watch there, number 24. See how this his defender goes underneath the screen? We're then going to pop out. We're going to make that pass, and now he has his space separation, what he needs, or that opportunity to get the advantage. Now he's got to make a play off of it. Here comes another pelican, kind of the idea of a pelican cut in terms of number 10 is going to go underneath the screen, and he's going to pop it right out. And now we got a three-pointer there. 
you go same same action there pelican cut he pops out now they actually go right into a little slip screen okay that's the next one what we call a spurs cut even though it was kind of on ball um but this is a great example of the guy cutting to the rim after so here's another example of the spurs or this slip cut um so we pass he's holding his screen here okay and he's just going to slip it or spurs cut right into the paint um, and that's typically done off ball as well when you go screen and your defender or your offensive teammate decides to um, pop out, runs a pop or um, a sonic cut. Now here's some Phoenix action again. Okay. Screen here, pass, we're looking to score. Um, sorry, that was actually Philly. Sorry, that was my mistake. Philly is, is our ball screen. Now we get a looking for a little high low action here. Okay. Um, this is our Houston action, which we'll see later on here. So you're looking to go high low, especially if you got the front side to throw over the top, just as he looks for. Now he's going to pass and he's going to run his Philly action. Pass. He 33 has playmaker status, so he doesn't have to screen away or basket cut if he chooses not to. And now he's setting his screen, and they're running a little two-man game on that side of it. Now we get some little Golden State action. Remember, this is a ghost screen type stuff. Fake screen, tries to give 22 a little bit of an advantage here. White does a pretty good job defending it. Watch 44 again here. Can pass. Coming to the ball, okay, here he comes again now. So that's a ball screen, he decides to pop out on this particular one. Here we go again, this is a good example of the Golden State action. Kind of a ghost screen, leads a little communication, and then bang, two points there. Here is just our Phoenix action, which everyone's going to be pretty comfortable with for our pistol action, where you're passing and you go get the ball and you make the play. So ball screen, here he comes, and now they're into their Phoenix. Pass, so gets it, makes a play. So, you know, similar to that um, Philly action, just kind of a pass and go. Now, here's an example of the Houston action that, we look, that we're going to look for this year. So, Harriman's posting up here. As you can see, the defender is three-quartering him on the high side. We then make a basket cut here, okay? to that nice high post area, and we're looking to go high-low just like that. Good pass, great catch, great finish. Um, the other action that we just want to just go and talk about and work on is when they do switch screens is a boomerang action. Um, so that's when you get matched up with a big guy on you. You're going to pass and get a ball right back to you to look to attack. So here's an example of it. Ball screen here, they switch, okay? Pass to the big man now. Big man's gonna go right back to the guard. And now he's gonna get kind of a head start to go by and attack his man um, and try to get himself into the paint. So that's gonna happen when teams switch um, our Philly or our Phoenix actions. And then finally, that kind of concludes the motion uh, discussion. Um, finally, it's just kind of the, the last component of the offense is ref hand-ins or special plays and situations. Remember, ref hand-ins happen about 15 times per high school game, give or take a little bit. Um, and these are our kind of our baseline out-of-bounds plays, our sideline out-of-bounds plays. Sometimes we have some quick hitters there. We want to get a certain player, a certain type of shot talking about our press breakers, our zone against off, uh, various fronts, whether it's odd or even, and then our end of game late clock situations and actions from there. Um, that kind of represents that third component um, to kind of the possession breakdowns um, in any particular offense.